twin and earth cable, we've all used it and we'll possibly be pulling thousands of meters throughout our working life. But what are the secrets behind the manufacturing process? In order to find out, I took a trip down to Doncaster Cables. So we're going to guide you through the process of manufacturing Twin and Earth. And the first stage of that process is to get our eight millimeter copper rod. And we're gonna draw that down into all the different wire diameters that we need uh, in our production facility. So this is eight millimeter in diameter, not cross-sectional area. And this is what all copper in uh, electrical cables starts off as. And you can see that the copper will come off of these four to five ton packs. So most of the packs are four tons, some are five tons, and it'll get fed into the machine and then we draw that down. So each part of this machine gradually makes uh, the copper diameter smaller. And you can see that as we open this up. So the eight millimeter rod is coming straight into the machine in the middle, and then it'll get to a die. These are diamond, tipped dies, industrial diamond, not the expensive diamonds that you get for rings. Um, and then each die will draw the copper down. So it goes from eight millimeters to seven millimeters, for example. Then it goes through another die, which is seven millimeters to six millimeters. And then as it goes through the whole process, it's gradually getting smaller and smaller um, until we get to the end and we have what we call a finishing die. And that is the final diameter wire that we want. This larger wire drawer that we do that we have will draw down to one millimeter in diameter. Anything else um, gets put through the second wire drawer that we've got on site. So there's the finishing die there. At this stage, the copper is what we call work hardened. So the copper has become quite brittle. This second part of the machine is softening that copper up. So it goes through annealers and high pressure steam tubes to clean it back up again. And our operator is just inching this through before running at full speed, which you can see now. And as we come on to this take-up drum, we're actually running at about 30 meters per second. And you can see how that's going onto the drum. Each one of the drums in this machine is probably carrying about two tons. After the wire drawing stage of the process, we need compound. And this is what insulates and sheathes uh, the cables. So we have our own thermoplastic PVC 70 degree compound plant on site. These silos are storing all the raw materials. So in here we have resins, fillers, stabilizers and oils. And these will get fed into the compound plant itself and we have a really high tech weighing system. The weighing system will weigh out to the recipes that we've created and they're all bespoke based on our recipes and how we want our cables to be. And then they come through and drop down into the mixing bowl before they're finally extruded. We have a secret recipe uh, PVC compound for our Twin and Earth, which makes it super soft, super supple. Um, and when you come to terminating your cables, it then makes it a lot easier for you to, to terminate um, in comparison to some other cheaper, less, lesser quality products. The other extrusion lines on site use a pellet form of PVC. So this PVC comes through the extruder and you can see the blades that are spinning round at high speed. They're chopping the PVC that we've made into little pellets and we then need to cool those pellets down before we can put them into storage for the other machines to use. The pellets are pumped up to these conditioning chambers. So the first one is rotating the pellets round so they don't stick together. Then the second one, it cools further before finally they get dropped into these storage bins and then they're pumped around site to all the different smaller silos that we use. One millimeter, 1.5 millimeter, and 2.5 millimeter squared twin earth uses a class one conductor, which is a single solid strand. Four millimeters and above then move to a class two conductor. This process is what we'd use to create a class two conductor. There's seven individual drums of copper that we've drawn in the wire drawer. They are then fed through this machine and they're all tensioned before they come into a face plate where we can start to form the circular shape of a class two conductor. We're going to open this machine up and show you how this process works. So inside this machine there's a large drum. This drum rotates and it pulls the copper wires from those individual packs onto the drum. All of the twisting motion comes from this carbon fibre bow. So the individual seven strands go around this bow and this whole bow rotates and spins around the drum and that's what puts the twist into the copper. This can rotate at about 1200 twists per minute when it's at full speed. So going back to the story of the Twin and Earth that we're watching, we're using class one conductor. So this single solid wire is going to come from this payoff stand and then we follow it down the line and it's gonna to come to the extrusion head. 
So as it goes through this process, we're constantly measuring the cable as it's manufactured. So we measure there at the blue box, the diameter of the copper wire. And then the compound granules that we've made are melted back down again. We add the colorant of blue in this scenario, and we're insulating that bare copper with blue PVC. So this PVC is about 180 to 200 degrees Celsius. And before we put this onto a drum to transfer it to the next stage, which is sheathing, we need to cool this core down. And we use uh, water baths. So as the cable goes through this water, it gradually gets cooler and cooler. There's then a final water chamber where it rotates around lots of wheels. You can see it coming out of this final wheel. It then goes through another measuring system, which is measuring the diameter of the insulation, but also the concentricity of the copper. Then there's a high voltage spark test to ensure that the cable has no defects and no pinprick holes. And then finally, it goes onto these big drums where we can store about 50,000 meters of core ready to be sheathed at the next stage. These cores are all left and stored on the factory floor. And then when we're ready to actually sheet them, we'll take a blue and a brown and a bare earth wire from the wire drawer and we'll thread that into the machine. The cores then come through our, our talc unit, our choking machine, so that we can coat it when the line's running. And then the operator will feed these into the back of the extrusion head through the point and the die. Uh, and the point is what holds the cores in place and the bare earth wire in place. And then we can cover it with the shape of the die. Machine starts up. We pull a purge valve so that the molten PVC is now coming onto the cable. This is now coloured grey. The wheels that we've just lifted up are applying the marking. So there's actually an indent wheel on there which is embossing Doncaster Cables England onto the outside of the sheath. Now that the line's up and running we can see the blue, the brown and the CPC coming into the cable. And it's very important before we go in there that we put as much front choke as we possibly can into the cable. You can see the amount of choke going on and you can always tell a Doncaster cable's to an earth compared to some other ones. By this fact, you should come home covered in white like a snowman. The rest of the extrusion process is very similar to the insulation line. So we now have to cool the product down before we put it onto the bolt drum. It's 180 to 200 degrees Celsius again. And if we don't do that, the cable will stick together. So as we go to the take up, there's an accumulator wheel. We have a dual take up on this machine like most of our other extruders. So the machine is constantly running once it's set up. So because we've shown the setup of this machine, we now need to transfer onto a new drum. You can see the blue and brown cores on the old one. The operator will fasten this cable to the base of this drum before he starts it up. And then once he's started up, the drum will run to about 10,000 meters. And then we have a bolt drum that we can take to final testing and then final winding. So what we do like to see in our twin earth cables is lots of white French chalk, which you can see here, we do a strip check and you can see how much chalk has worked its way around those cores and the earth wire. Final high voltage testing. So we have two high voltage testing chambers. So we're now gonna show you the high voltage test procedure on this three core and CPC. So we need to strip the cable back at both ends and then we need to connect up each core and the high voltage test procedure will test each core to every other metallic component in the cable at 3000 volts. So we close up the test chamber area um, and then we make sure that all the interlocks are in place because it is at high voltage. The machine is then set for different cables. So this twin and earth is tested at 3000 volts for five minutes. The test equipment ramps up to the 3000 volts before the duration timer starts. And we can see that that five minute clock is now reducing. And then at the end of the test, we count that down and it'll ramp down. The machine then does analysis on the performance of the cable. And if everything is good, it will bring up test completed successfully. So the drum is identified as high voltage passed and this can now transfer onto the final winding stage. Final winding stage for Twin and Earth is fully automated. We're winding at about 300 meters a minute. So every 20 seconds, we're getting a 100 meter reel of Twin and Earth coming off this machine. The machine has a dual winding head. So while it's winding on one side, it is wrapping the reel on the other. And this allows us to process the cable more efficiently. So this winding machine is super accurate. It measures to one centimeter and all of our reels are wound at 100 meters as a minimum. And it'll be between 100 and 101 meters on a reel. The machine has an automated labeling system which puts all the relevant information on regards CPR and the product details. And then the conveyor belt system finally ends up at a robotic arm where the cable is lifted up and stacked onto a pallet in the formation that we'd like. 
The final stage that we need to do is then to wrap the pallet once it's full and then we can process this into the warehouse and ready for dispatch to our customers. So we pride ourselves on manufacturing the highest quality product and looking after our customers and at our facility in Doncaster we're manufacturing about a million metres per week of high quality British made cable. But what about manufacturers that like to cut a few corners? This cable drum here we labelled as the ugly cable. If you want to see some of the corners that those type of companies can cut, check out the video just here.